How's it going, comic book fans? Welcome back to Comic Drops for another comic book review. Today, we're exploring Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, issue number two, written and drawn by Patrick Horvath and published by IDW. Does it maintain the storytelling excellence from issue number one? Stay tuned to find out. So issue number two picks up right after the shocking events of issue number one. Martin the Goat has been murdered, and his body is discovered on a float during the parade. The sheriff of Woodbrook holds a town meeting, as there hasn't been a murder in the town in over 40 years, and the animal citizens are understandably unnerved. Among the concerned citizens is Cherry Gherkins, a pig, is the most upset and blaming the sheriff for not having a suspect in custody yet. The meeting ends with our main character, Sam the Bear, realizing that if she doesn't find the killer first, her own crimes might be exposed. Essentially, it's a game of cat and mouse between two serial killers, with Sam fearing that the mysterious killer could reveal her secret to the town first. The premise of this series is incredibly compelling. Seeing the panic among the townspeople while knowing a serial killer is among them keeps readers hooked, and Horvath handles this masterfully. Sam then visits Bertie the Turtle, the owner of the float where Martin was found. In a hilarious scene, Bertie and Sam have a conversation with Bertie's head stuck in his shell, but Sam coaxes him out with a sour apple sucker. Noticing Bertie has a black eye, Sam learns that on the night of the parade, Bertie sent Melody Davis the cat home early because she was allergic to the lavender on the float. After she left, Bertie heard additional sneezes, meaning either Melody stayed around or the killer is also allergic to lavender. The multi-layered mystery here is engaging and it keeps me intrigued. Next, Sam stops by the hardware store where everyone is buying up security-related items because of the murder. After witnessing Cherry Gherkin block traffic to go to a coffee shop, Sam heads over there, suspecting Cherry punched Birdie earlier. At the coffee shop, Cherry rudely berates an employee, and Sam insinuates that Cherry hit Birdie, leading to a screaming match filled with expletives. Again, Horvath subverts expectations with these storybook characters dropping F-bombs, creating a hilarious contrast between the way they look and what they say. Cherry exits, threatening to sue Sam for harassment. Later that night, Cherry goes jogging, reflecting on how she'll make anyone who messes with her regret it. Several panels showcase the eerie emptiness of the town after the murder, creating a dark and creepy atmosphere. Then Cherry encounters someone and speaks to them as if she knows them. This person then attacks Cherry with a knife, cutting off four of her fingers. Cherry runs away, climbs a fire escape, and then breaks into a school, but is ultimately killed by this mysterious figure with an axe. The next day, Cherry's severed head is found on a stick in Woodbrook Elementary School with head of the class written in blood on the wall behind her. The issue closes with the townspeople becoming even more distraught after another murder. From a narrative perspective, this issue is a whirlwind of dark humor, blood and gore, and it subverts readers' expectations all around. Horvath has crafted a compelling story with an intriguing premise, making me an immediate fan. The layered narrative allows for dynamic characters and an engaging murder mystery. The thrill of Sam trying to solve the killer's identity to protect her own secret is just as compelling in this issue as it was in the first. Now let's talk about the visuals of this compelling comic book. Patrick Horvath, who also handles the art and colors here, is the driving creative force behind this entire series. The characters from Sam to Birdie to Cherry are drawn with the care of a beloved children's book, reminiscent of the Berenstain Bears. This makes the gruesome scenes and expletive-laden events even more jarring. Seeing Cherry's fingers cut off and her severed head on a stick is extremely unsettling, heightened by the cute storybook-like art style. The stark contrast between the innocent, charming appearance of these characters and the graphic violence they endure creates a uniquely disturbing effect for the reader. 
The watercolor style Horvath uses for the coloring enhances this effect, making their brutality stand out even more against the otherwise serene and whimsical backgrounds. The characters are so endearing in their design that when the violence erupts, it feels shockingly out of place, which adds to the horror and the dark humor of this series. Horvath's choice to use a watercolor style for the coloring is brilliant. The book looks and feels like a children's book, except for the graphic violence, of course. The variety of shots from close-ups capturing genuine reactions to wide shots showcasing scale makes for a dynamic read. The kinetic energy in the panels, especially during the argument between Sam and Cherry in the coffee shop, adds to this intensity. And the standout scene of Cherry's murder keeps readers on the edge, with each frame meticulously crafted to build suspense. I mean, this book's visuals are second to none in the comic book industry right now. On the color side of things, the vibrant, almost dreamy colors create a stark contrast with the brutal events that unfold, enhancing the overall impact of the visuals. The combination of charming character designs, dynamic panel composition, and vibrant colors makes this book a visual masterpiece. This art style not only supports the narrative, but also elevates it, creating a uniquely immersive and unsettling reading experience for everyone who picks this up. To sum things up, Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, issue number two excels in both narrative and visuals. The story offers dynamic character development, an engaging premise and enough twist to keep readers hooked throughout. Patrick Horvath's art style enhances the narrative, creating a visually stunning and uniquely unsettling comic book experience. This issue is a must read for fans of dark humor and mystery or comics in general. So that wraps up my thoughts on Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, issue number two. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below what you think about this comic. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Comic Drops.